<clears throat> as many organizations now store data in multiple public clouds, not using only one. So often this data ends up being isolated. And because it's hard to get insights uh, across all of these clouds yeah, in one place. And obviously um, business and engineers wants, they want to be able to analyze the data with a multi-cloud data tool that is inexpensive, fast, and does not create any additional overhead of uh, decentralized data governance. And here comes big query omni. As this tool reduces these frictions with a unified interface. Let's take a look at architecture. So BigQuery itself, uh, BigQuery's architecture separates uh, compute from storage and allowing BigQuery to scale out as needed to, hand, to handle very large workloads. And BigQuery only extends this architecture by running the BigQuery uh, query engine in other clouds. Uh, so, and as a result of this separation, you don't have to physically move data into BigQuery storage itself. So uh, processing happens where the data already sits. As we can see on this picture, uh, yeah, we have uh, uh, BigQuery compute clusters uh, in AWS region and data resides in S3 storage. Uh, and uh, yeah, BigQuery engine runs in the same region where your data sits. BigQuery Omni runs on Antos clusters that are fully managed by Google Cloud and allow you to securely execute queries on other public clouds. Antos hybrid and multi-cloud application platform allowed uh, Google to build, deploy, and manage BigQuery query engine uh, called Dremel on multiple clouds. And uh, to maintain a single interface, uh, control uh, plane lives on Google, and it gives a secure connection between Google Cloud and other public clouds. So uh, queries are transmitted to, to the other clouds. And when we want results to get back to BigQuery on Google Cloud. Uh, the same architecture is for Azure. So uh, BigQuery only supports Azure and AWS clouds. Okay, another, another slide is again about architecture and uh, about connection. So as I said, uh, query results are returned to Google Cloud over secure connection and uh, they can be displayed in Google console. Uh, but you, or, or <clears throat> alternatively, you can write results uh, directly to Amazon S3 storage or Azure Blob storage if you don't need these query results to get back on GCP side. And in this case, there is no cross cloud movement of query results. Um, as for security, BigQuery Omni uses standard AWS IAM roles or Azure Active Directory principles to access the data in your subscription. You delegate read or write access to BigQuery Omni and you can revoke it at any time. As for write access, it's, it's only, it is only required if you want to write your query results back to S3 or Azure blob storage. So if you don't need it, to, then read permissions are enough. And let's take a look at benefits and limitations. As for benefits, yeah, it's a, it's a good moment <laughs> performance. Uh, you get your insights faster because data is not copied across, across cl clouds. Queries run in the same region. Uh, cost. You save on network egress costs because data don't move. Data doesn't move. Uh, there are no additional charges to your AWS or Azure account related to BigQuery Omni Analytics because uh, queries themselves run on clusters managed by Google. You don't have to worry about it. And. Sure. 
You are only built for running Russia? queries no, using the query pricing model. Uh, as for security and data governance. So you manage the data in your own AWS or subscription, and you don't need to move or copy raw data out of your public cloud. All computations happens in, in the BigQuery multi-tenant service, which runs within the same regions, region as your data. Uh, serverless architecture. Uh, as, uh, as a BigQuery, BigQuery Omni is serverless, a serverless offering, and Google deploys and manages clusters as it runs BigQuery Omni. You don't need to provision any resources or manage any clusters. So it's very easy to use this tool. Uh, ease of management. Uh, BigQuery Omni provides unified management uh, interface through Google Cloud. It uses your existing Google Cloud account and BigQuery projects. You can write Google uh, standard SQL query in Google Cloud Console to query data in AWS or Azure. And results displayed in Google Cloud Console if you, if you don't export them to S3 or blob storage. But also uh, we have a cross cloud uh, transfer tool. It's a relatively new and it uh, became generally available yesterday, uh, first of November first of November. Uh, using this tool, you can load data into native BigQuery tables from S3 buckets and Azure Blob Storage. Okay, limitations. Uh, there are only one uh, region for AWS and one for Azure uh, that are currently supported. So this, this one is a major limitation. Uh, uh, queries that uh, are running using BigQuery Omni, they require flat rate pricing. So the pricing is relatively high, yeah. But for for the time being, uh, on-demand pricing is available as a, uh, a limited time offer to, to try and experiment with BigQuery Omni. Uh, documentation say, uh, states that it will be till the end of March of the next year. Uh, so it's uh, it's not that complex to, and you don't need any extra money to play and try what is BigQuery Omni, yeah? because flat pricing, even with flexible um, plan, it's pretty expensive. Uh, you can't create standard tables uh, in BigQuery Omni. It supports only external ones. Also, there are limitations uh, related to types of queries. So BigQuery ML statements are not supported. Uh, DDL statements uh, that require data management in BigQuery also not supported. Uh, and DML statements that is important are also uh, not, uh, <clears throat> not supported here. As uh, AWS and Azure external tables, uh, it, the data resides in all regions. So it means you can join them with BigQuery native regions because it, it would be a cross region join, which is not possible in BigQuery. And to join, if you want to join this data, you have to move it uh, to BigQuery native data sets. So here's where we need a cross cloud data transfer. Uh, as for results uh, that are returned by queries, uh, it's a subtle point here. Uh, so if query results larger than 10 gigabytes, uh, you can't do, you can't get these results. And in this case, uh, you must consider exporting these results into S3. But even in practice, I, I was not able to get query results bigger than one gigabyte. So maybe it's still something under construction, I don't know. Uh, but uh, take into account if, if you really uh, have huge results of your queries, they can be a problem. And uh, results that you get from BigQuery only, they're stored in temporary table 
but you cannot use select statement with this kind of tables. It's not supported. Okay, let's take a look at some maybe popular uh, use cases that can be achieved using BigQuery only. Uh, in, first example is related to uh, dashboards and analytics. If you use Looker, for example, you can build a dashboard and visualize data from all the clouds in one dashboard, for, for example, GCP and AWS. Um, if you, let's say, have another use case, uh, if you have some ETL pipelines uh, using custom code, extracting some data in uh, clouds, uh, let's say from Parquet file to CSV files or something like that, uh, you can simplify these pipelines using BigQuery Omni and querying your, your data using plain SQL. And this is like a simplification of how you can retrieve insights from your data. Another use case is related to, let's say, Google Ads marketing platform. Uh, you can use BigQuery Omni to export data from your multiple public clouds uh, and prepare extracts and uh, import them to marketing platform uh, as, as a files. So uh, you, you, let's say you use Google Ads for build, to build custom audiences. Uh, th this would be a, another good use case. Okay. Uh, now we will take a look at practical example, how to query Amazon S3 data, how to create all the required infrastructure. So prerequisites, yeah, we, we will talk about AWS cloud. So what we need here, if, if we talk about some production use case, so it would be a flat right pricing model, as I said, but still you can play with it on demand. Uh, we need an AWS account and uh, permissions to modify policies and roles in AWS. So to establish this connection to use BigQuery Omni, you, what you need to do is create AWS and I am policy, I am role, uh, create a BigQuery connection to AWS on GCP site, and then link the trust policy uh, in AWS role to this connection, to BigQuery connection, I mean. Uh, this one is an example of I am policy JSON. We, here we uh, specify that we want to read some uh, specific bucket on S3, given uh, read and only read permissions, as, as we talked about, only querying the data. Um, and uh, what, what else? We, we, as I said, this one is a JSON example. And uh, important moment that, as you know, AWS uh, uh, stores uh, its objects in an ARN notation. Okay. Uh, then we create a IAM role in, on AWS and uh, a link or attach this IAM policy to this role. And important point here is that uh, later when we create a BigQuery connection, uh, we will link a role using audience. So for now, we like first we put a placeholder in a role for this Google identity. Um, okay, next, BigQuery connection. So pretty simple. We choose a region, which is only now for AWS now. We link AWS role in this ARN format. So which role will be used by this connection? And when we create a connection 
then we will be able to to get a Google identity for this connection. And later, we go back to a role and update this identity. So now uh, uh, they are both linked AWS role and big BigQuery GCP connection. And finally, we can create an external table using created connection. Uh, so first, we create a data set in, in the same AWS region, only once supported. Uh, to create a table, we what is important here is that we specify a file format, file of format of files on S3, specify a pass, and uh, what connection do we use. So basically simple, and now we can query this table. Uh, again, if if you query a table and results are relatively big, so consider exporting results to S3 because you cannot uh, these these query results are limited. Okay. Uh, also, how how to export these results? We have to S3. We we have a special uh, statement here export data with connection and it allows you to store results of your query on, on, on the very same public cloud where the source of this query resides so in this case you don't move your results to BigQuery to go uh, you don't move them back to your GCP and in this case you need to write permissions to the bucket where you want to write the results. If you don't export data, you don't need any write permissions. May I have a question? Uh, yeah, sure. Just just wondering about the previous slides because at this point you are executing some queries. So and you said there is some kind of omni cluster required in AWS site. Is it like you you have not showed it uh, for uh, to us, or is it like uh, you you have created it for your example or? Cluster cluster is like managed by Google. Okay. And you for for you it's like transparent. The same oh, okay. Gotcha. As you use uh, <clears throat> BigQuery, yeah. So it's uh, serverless architecture for users. So okay. Now I got it. You okay. You don't basically you don't worry about any infrastructure. All, all you need is to establish connections, and uh, like uh, manage the security using mm -hmm. role policies on AWS site and uh, BigQuery Omni connection on GCP and that's it. Okay, thanks. Yeah, cool. So uh, we talked about exporting uh, data and now, now we will talk about cross-cloud transfer. As I said, it, it became publicly available only yesterday. So by the time this presentation was prepared, it was still in uh, in beta, and pretty simple tool, but very very convenient. Yeah, it's another statement load data, and uh, it allows you to uh, transfer to to load your AWS or Azure data into BigQuery native tables. So why why would you need that? Yeah, Because if you want to analyze and join your BigQuery native tables with AWS, so you cannot do this in, in one query because uh, data resides in different regions. And GCP doesn't support this kind of joins. Or if you want to uh, utilize BigQuery ML capabilities. Yeah, again, you need to transfer data to, to GCP. And this statement lets you, lets you do this. Uh, again, you need a BigQuery connection to move this data. As you can see, we specify connection name in, in this kind of statement, specifying uh, files. Uh, 
GCP table where we get these results and specifying connection. Okay, what, what are the limitations for cross cloud transfer? Yeah. Uh, maybe uh, the most important and is uh, that only US multi region data sets are supported. And again, uh, with pricing, uh, this load statement it doesn't use uh, flat, flat rate pricing opposite to uh, BigQuery Omni uh, native queries. It, it utilizes on-demand slots. And some best practices are that avoid to move, avoid moving uh, many small files that are less than five megabytes. Uh, if uh, if let's say your data is very big and you move that, that can be a bottleneck for data transfer. You, you may consider reducing the size of data that you move. If, if it's feasible, then do that and uh, it will work faster and you will pay less for data transfer itself because here with cross cloud transfer, what you pay for is uh, for transferred bytes. Uh, it is a per gigabyte rate. Okay, and now we move to uh, data reconciliation use case. Uh, uh, part of I our- I have a question, team. sorry. Um, yeah, uh, sure. before we are moving forward. So what about the performance uh, so we have some limitations here. Yes, uh, it's clear. Uh, did somebody uh, test the performance of such approach of ingestion data between the clouds? Uh, did you, you, mean, did you have such experience? Uh, did we test uh, uh, volumes? What is better to use traditional uh, approaches for uh, moving data from between clouds or we have to, for example, load data jobs uh, inside of the BigQuery and uh, using such a simple approach to, to get this data into BigQuery? Um, well, I didn't compare like alternative mm -hmm. ways to ingest data. And uh, as I said, it's, it's only uh, now uh, is generally available, but I believe that uh, you, you should try First, this load data statements because mm -hmm. okay. uh, they, thank you they very like, much. Uh, they like uh, give it a, a very good perspective. Yeah, so this one was like a separate tool. First, BigQuery, BigQuery Omni were, became generally available earlier. Yeah, and this uh, cross cloud transfer was sometime in 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 progress in development, and uh, I believe it it can manage. Uh, relatively big volumes of data, right? It, it depends like on your uh, expectations, yeah, on your pipelines, if uh, if you're fine with some, uh, if you're fine with waiting them to complete. So for sure you need to test and try what okay. is good for you. Thank you. Yeah, welcome. Well, uh, there's uh, some another question about the data filtering or uh, maybe um, some pre-processing. As I uh, uh, heard earlier, we cannot perform some da data manipulation, but um, is it possible to load uh, just a part of data or some filtered amount yeah. of data? Sure. Uh, okay. If uh, read SQL statements are kind of fully supported and uh, the less data you query and the less data you get as a result to GCP is the better. So sure you can play with filtering and with even joins are supported. So you, you can join data on uh, AWS site. I mean, if you have, let's say three uh, external tables uh, on AWS site, data is stored in S3, uh, you can join them and get uh, your results back. It's fine. What you cannot do is to do cross uh, region join. Yes, okay, thank you. 
Any more questions or we can proceed? Okay. So yeah. Uh, but this one, this uh, use case is uh, uh, a practical example of how a soft serve team um, participated in investigation of BigQuery Omni tool when it was in development. So we had an early access and uh, dived into this uh, like uh, in 2021. And uh, so what what is what is it about? Uh, we have a link here uh, on the article where this use case is described by Artem Plush. He he was he participated in in this research with other guys. I I joined later uh, to finalize uh, the research when BigQuery Omni was uh, uh, like polished and became generally available. So during the migration process, uh, when you migrate some data right between clouds, it may be difficult to avoid some data corruption. Uh, business metrics may lose their precision, records may be truncated, and some data may just be lost. So to ensure that after migration, we haven't lost any important pieces of information, we need to perform data reconciliation. So we, basically we want to check if our data is fine after migration, right? if everything is okay. And uh, this process consists of doing some data check, data checks across source and target, target data sets, and uh, finally comparing the results. And uh, those checks may be based on some aggregations such as counts, may be performed by comparing hashes of columns, hashes of tables, and other properties. Uh, so before BigQuery Omni, you had to transfer your raw source data to cloud storage from your sort cloud and load it to BigQuery. So you could run scripts uh, like on both data sets. So you had to move your raw data into GCP. And that's where data, where, that's where you get data uh, duplication, additional costs for data transfer. Uh, with BigQuery Omni, we can avoid this as we can query data where it sits in AWS. And so we, we get a, a possibility to work in really multi-cloud environment. So this picture describes a simplified example yeah, of, of migration process and further verification and reconciliation of data results. Uh, let's assume that migration is done by extracting data from some data warehouse to S3 bucket. Then data is transferred to Google Cloud Storage and loaded to BigQuery with some transformations. And in this case, BigQuery Omni is connected to S3 bucket with extracted data. And it's a, BigQuery Omni is a single point of access to, to the files with the possibility to access uh, all the data via SQL. And as a, as a benefit, validation scripts can be ex executed in one place. But uh, in one place on GCP site, and uh, we can compare validation metrics in one environment. Uh, if you want to, you even can generate uh, some report or implement data validation dashboard if, if you have some very big uh, migration process. So again, in, on this picture, we have a redshift, we extracted data to S3, loaded them to cloud storage and imported uh, these files to BigQuery. So that's where we have BigQuery native tables with target data and BigQuery only still can access the raw files on S3. And let me go, let me show you the 
demo itself. It's a demo time. Uh, what we have here. So our source data. Can can you see my AWS console? Yep. Cool. So we have uh, we have a source bucket where our extracted data sits on S3. We use London Bicycles data set. So we have some other files here on S3 side. Let's say we migrate this data somehow to Google Cloud Storage and it sits in cloud storage bucket. Uh, like, let's say this, uh, let's imagine these are some kind of transformed files um, transferred to <clears throat> cloud storage. On BigQuery side, we have uh, an external connection established uh, to AWS. So here we have uh, AWS role, ARM, BigQuery identity, and connection, connection ID is something like that. Now we can use this connection to Query the data itself. We have uh, external tables for AWS data. Cycle hire is an external table to Avro files located in S3 using our connection. Uh, data set location is this region. And we have kind of native GCP BigQuery table, but it's still external, but pointing to uh, cloud storage. Uh, so uh, migrated AWS data, this one. So it's a simple external table to cloud storage, uh, pointing to these migrated files. Okay, we we have all stuff we have all required infrastructure and we can validate data using some aggregations. As I said, we use um, count rows and hashes for the table, this kind of query, and uh, let's run it against AWS data. It will take some time. It runs on on-demand pricing models. So I, I uh, haven't bought any slots. So, okay, I have some results. Th this is a very simple example of the query only uh, query running against AWS external table and getting results to GCP console, yeah. But for if we talk about our validation uh, use case, data reconciliation, what we want to do is to compare the results, but, but our GCP, uh, GCP data sits in, in a different region. Yeah, it's a US multi-region, while our AWS data sits in its own sp special AWS region in GCP. Yeah. We, what, what I want to say is that we cannot query these uh, two tables in, in one SQL query uh, because cross-region queries are not supported. I hope to say are not supported yet, but I'm not sure if it will be uh, implemented uh, in any way, yeah, anytime. Um, and as a workaround during during this research, what we did to to be able to compare them, uh, we created a couple of uh, cloud functions. 
uh, that uh, under the hood implement this query with uh, some aggregations and store results in GCP. So first one is validate GCP data. Actually, we don't do any cross cloud transfer here. We just query native GCP external table and store results in uh, BigQuery native data set. Uh, let me, let's say, drop existing table for, for a clean test. So again, this cloud function aggregates some metrics and stores it in uh, BigQuery native table. It still takes some time since the number of rows is relatively big. Okay, we, we have it here. Uh, GCP validation results. Okay, let me maybe refresh it to see in a tree. The table is recreated. GCP validation results data set. Here we go. Cycle higher. Created just now, and we have metrics about migrated table, some checksum and number of records. And as for AWS external table, we do logically the same. We have AWS validation results table. Let's delete it. But in practice, um, this uh, an, an, another cloud function, it executes the same SQL, but uh, do additional work. It uh, export results to S3. So first metrics that we calculate are stored in a S3 bucket. And then uh, using cross-cloud transfer, the second step, we uh, import this data to be query native table. Let me run this cloud function. Okay, it's done. Let's refresh again. We have AWS validation results data set, cycle higher table created just now. And we have the same metrics here. And let's look at queries that this cloud function executed. So, so the first one, let's say the sort from the top is GCP uh, validation. And these first two are AWS validation. So first one for AWS, first step of AWS function is export data. Uh, export results of these aggregations to S3. We specify S3 pass here. And the, the second one is a cross-cloud transfer of this file into GCP native table. So that's where we specify AWS validation results, cycle higher table, and 
import data from S3. And finally, we can query this data, this validation metrics in one query and compare them. So yeah, it's a pretty simple example, but yeah, simplicity here is just to uh, explain how it works. So yeah, now we have native tables in BigQuery in different data sets, GCP validation results and AWS validation results. And we can query them in one SQL query and compare the results. So this is how we achieved this validation in, in one shot. Uh, that was the idea of this uh, cloud functions. So basically, that's it for, for the demo. And that was the last topic of presentation.